Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Uh, live streaming on both here. Just getting my camera set up and got a new setup here. Um, hopefully, won't have any problems with choppy service here uh, on a different computer today streaming. So hopefully that works. Uh, okay, there went my notification that I'm live. So uh, some people should be getting on here very soon. And so good morning, everybody who's tuning in. Facebook. And let's see. All right. So it is Tuesday the 4th. It is Tuesday the 4th, one day before Cinco de Mayo. Um, Cinco de Mayo, a um, great holiday that everybody loves to celebrate. There's all, it's always it's a great reason to have a margarita or a mojito and celebrate. So Cinco de Mayo is tomorrow here in Elmville tomorrow. Supposedly, weather permitting, we're supposed to close the streets for traffic and open the streets for dining. We will be open um, with a limited menu tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be giving out free popcorn. Uh, we'll be spending some cotton candy and um, making margaritas with our slushy machine, flavored margaritas. Uh, Gabby's is going to be doing their traditional Cinco de Mayo festival, um, making margaritas, a mariachi band, I believe. Things like that. So, Janar and I spoke to each other about two weeks ago, and um, I said, Yep, yeah, I would be happy to open up and uh, make margaritas as well and be part of the festivities. So, that's the plan for tomorrow for Cinco de Mayo. So, good morning, everybody tuning in. If you're tuning in, drop a comment, hashtag live, or uh, if you're watching live, or hashtag replay on the replay. So, I'm streaming from a different computer today uh, from my office today. Um, one of my other different MacBooks um, I'm streaming from. So hopefully we won't have choppy service on choppy streaming on Facebook. Uh, so just um, Joel's always a good, uh, always lets me know. So Joel, am I am I in? Is my how's my uh, how's the stream going? And hello to everybody over on um, Instagram. I'm fine today. Instagram. Maybe it was the computer, or maybe I need to reboot the other computer. But the other way, this is the other computer I've been using um, to stream with um, MacBook Air, and I got my MacBook Pro here now. So I rebooted this computer yesterday. I just was afraid to try it today. Um, all right. So the title of today's video is "We Will Never Go Back There." Uh, we won't go back. So Jamie and I, um, I did a video the other day on uh, why we love buying from small brands and uh, the relationships that we build with small brands. And um, just that's how you do business, right? You do business with handshakes, you do business breaking bread, you do business you know, face-to-face. -face. And um, that's for us, that's, a, that's the way we've done business for years. That's the way we love to do business. And we don't care. We don't care if a sales rep walks in with a 98-point wine that's on sale and that this, that's, this is hard to get. If I'm not happy with um, if I don't, if I don't go to the winery, if I don't know the winery, if I don't know whatever, I, I just, I'm not happy buying it. We're a distributor. I'm just not happy buying it. We were buying Spain's number one rated Verdejo wine several years ago. Um, we had bought it several times. The distributor came in, uh, showed us this wine. It's the number one rated Verdejo in Spain. The wine was dynamite, dynamite, dynamite. And I thought the distributor understood that what we were looking for. And it was a small company, too. It was a small company. And they ended up selling us a wine that was um, co-op wine that the winery makes like 8 million bottles a year. Something insane. Something like massive. We ended up showing this, uh, like just driving by the place in Spain. And it's like, oh, we buy from that winery. And we turned the, turn, turn the corner and went in. And it was the size of a football field. And like, ah, we're just not happy buying wine from a huge massive conglomerate company like this big you know production um however um we just got back from long island now, long island has a lot of much much many much more small long, 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 long island is small winery based finger lakes are small winery based so these are not um these are not wineries that are doing massive 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 numbers um compared to napa and other regions of the world so um, we took, gee, we were there almost four days last week in, um, in Long Island. We were only supposed to go for three days and we we're having such a good time and we didn't see as much as we wanted to see that we, that we kept going. We stayed another day. We probably would have stayed another day too, if the hotel had, a, 
who <laughs> the hotel was empty. The hotel and the extra rooms, if they were booked out for the weekend, we would actually stay another day. Long Island Wine Country is amazing. If you've not gone to Long Island Wine Country, it is a must if you're into wine. Um, the North Fork especially is where most of the wineries are concentrated. And they're one winery after another winery after another winery on this beautiful, beautiful land out there on the North Fork. Um, so Jamie and I did that. So we did that last week. So we visited lots of wineries. We visited lots of wineries. Wineries that we knew of, wineries that we bought from before, wineries that um, we did not know about that we showed up to. Um, some of them we surprised them, just popped in. And some of them um, knew, knew, knew about us. One of the ones that knew about us, one of the ones that knew about us, um, will never go back there. And it was a winery we've actually served their, their rosé before by the glass. And we did this about three years ago. We served their rosé by the glass. We did it for two seasons. Uh, we bought two rounds of their rosé. And I got to tell you, we will never go back to this winery. We'll never buy their wine. And here's why. They didn't take care of us. Um, if you know that a client's coming in, if you know that a restaurant owner's coming in, if you know that somebody in the industry is coming in, um, if you know that that somebody that you can do B two B with, you take care you take care of them. You absolutely take care of them. When we go to Italy, it doesn't matter what winery it is. These most wineries, but the fa- all the family owned wineries, all the family owned wineries, even in Spain. All the family-owned wineries will bend over backwards for you. Bend over backwards. You can just show up. We've had people open up from Siesta and have an amazing afternoon with the family at La Maggia on top of the mountain in Montalcino. Um, just driving by, saw the sign. So we have their wine. Drove in and had an amazing time back in 2009 uh, with this family. And they were literally on Siesta. Everything was closed up. Shutters were closed. And, you know, and we're down there, like, knocking on the door. And they live at the winery. So they opened up for us and opened up some amazing Brunello and Rosos and... We had an amazing, amazing afternoon with this with this family. Um, they didn't speak English, we didn't speak Italian, but we just understood each other, and it was a great afternoon. So we went to this one winery last week. We bought their wines. Um, they knew who we are. They knew who we were because we made arrangements through our distributor, through the sales rep, called their point person, and set the tasting up. Um, when a chef comes to my restaurant, when I know a chef comes to my restaurant. In the Hudson Valley or another chef, I always comp something. I always like give them an extra dish. I do something because I'm honored that another chef is coming into my restaurant. If you, you know, if I know who you are and this that, or know about you, I'll buy you something. I, I want, I want to be, I want to do something above and beyond you just coming into my restaurant. I just, it's a, it's, it's an industry courtesy. So, in the wine world and in the restaurant world, we have these industry courtesies. I don't, I don't expect, I'm not going to give away a free meal, nor do I expect when I go any place to get a free meal. But it's nice to get, you know, to say, hey, you know, thanks for dining with us. I, you didn't, you didn't order our tuna today. You got to try our tuna. I sent out a, a tuna for you to try. I think it's our best dish. Like that's what we'll typically do if a chef comes in. Um, and when we go to another place, that, you know, if they do that, it's like, wow, great, awesome, beautiful, amazing. Wineries, however, there's this universal industry standard at wineries that if a restaurant owner goes to a winery, typically, typically, they get a comp. They get a comp and they get a tasting comp. They get the taste. They get the taste. And we don't expect anything for free. We don't expect anything for free. But it's just a common courtesy. So we went to a winery. They actually charged us for the tasting. They knew we were industry. We had an in-depth conversation, but then the problem was they, it was only 50 bucks. The, the money is nothing. The problem was they didn't take care of us. They didn't, they didn't explain things. They just did their first round, gave us the wines and then disappeared on us. Like totally disappeared. Like to a point where we're like, okay, like what, where is anybody here? Like what's going on here? Um, and then, you know, so we, we, when they came back, you know, we tried to ask as many questions as possible and figure things out. And at the end of the at, at the end of our experience, you know, I just simply asked myself, so, "Do you guys do any industry comps, um, industry and courtesies?" We were, told we'd be taken care of. we were told we were told everything was taken care of. And they go, "Yeah, we do industry comps." I said, "Oh, great. Well, what is your industry industry comp?" And they go, "Oh, it's thirty percent off of a bottle of wine." Now, for us, that's nothing because we can go buy their wine for thirty percent off from our distributor all day long. So it's really not a comp. The big issue here was they totally like ignored us during this whole tasting they knew we wanted to bring 14 people they knew we bought their wines in the past 
the other wineries that we went to, we showed up to like a place, uh, a winery called Pominock, told, showed up totally unannounced. We told the, the girl working the desk, you know, we're restaurant owners, here we are, you know, gave them our card. The next thing we know, the owner of the winery is at our table. At our table, thanking us for coming in, stopping in, telling us to taste whatever we want, gave us a little quick tour, and it was amazing. Most wineries will do that. This winery, however, everything was prearranged, and they did nothing. So here's my issue. If they don't take care of me and I'm announced when I go there, how can I ever bring our guests there? Because we do all these great tours to wine country in Italy, Spain, um, Long Island, now Long Island, and the Finger Lakes. So my big issue is if they don't take care of me, Jamie, and I when we're there, like they're not taking care of me bringing 14 people there. They're totally not doing that. You can just see the culture of the winery it's just, it's just not about that. And it was very like, oh, wow, Jack. And I really liked their wines, too. They had really good wines. And I liked their Pinot Noir because we of their rosé, because we'd served their Pinot their Rosé twice before, two previous years. So it's not that I don't like the wine. I just don't like the way that they operate their business. I just didn't get a great feeling. And, you know, for us, it's all about relationships. Like, I have no idea who to even call at this winery right now. If I had a problem, if I wanted to call someone, I had no idea who to even call because no... I don't know who anybody was. The other wineries, like Pominock, the other Sparkling Point, the other wineries that we just showed up to by surprise, the owners came, the managers came, the winemakers came out. They all came out. They gave us a little quick tour. Like, I can call these wineries now and say, hey, you know, at least thanks for the tasting. At least thanks for the hospitality. Or send them a thank you card. I know, I know who the contact person is. This one winery, I have no idea who the contact person is whatsoever. Um, and so it was just like, oh, wow. It's like... With all these, with all the great wine that's happening out there, and all the amazing owners and winemakers that are out there, why would I ever buy this wine again? Why would I ever go back there again? I don't care what their rating is. I don't care how good their wines are, because it's really not a personal feeling for me. I know one person who actually hated, hated a, a brewery owner. Like, to, like this, this is a, another restaurant owner. Totally hated a brewery owner. Like. I don't like the guy, like, actively spoke about him. The guy's a jerk. The guy's an a-hole, whatever. The guy's a jerk. I don't like him. But as soon as he started making great beer and got a beer with a great rating, this restaurant owner started buying his beer. And I was like, isn't it like, like you're comfortable buying a beer from a brewery that you hate the owner, that you dislike the owner? That you, you've actively you've actively bashed the owner in, in like, publicly, like, in conversation with people. You've actively said... You know, the guy's a jerk, this and that. But once he gets a great rating on a beer, you start buying his beer. I was like, this, this is, this is what, this is what restaurants do. They don't, they, they just, for a lot of people, it's just not. They don't care about the relationships. Now that other brewery owner, like I happen to be very good friends with the other brewery owner, not very good friends, but I like, to, I get along with him very well. I get along with him really well. Um, you know, so a lot of, a lot of, for J, Jamie and I just. We want the whole picture when we do business. This is what the video was on the other day when we started doing, when I did the video the other day and why we buy from small businesses. And it's it's really goes beyond buying from a small business. It goes from buying, you know, buying from a business that is respectable. Because a lot of small businesses aren't respectable. And this small winery, I just, I just, we just, Jamie and I just didn't feel it from this winery. So there's no reason for us to ever go back there. There's no reason for us to take our guests there. I can guarantee you they're not taking care of our guests if we show up there. I can guarantee that 100%. Um, and it's a shame. So for us, um, it's all about the small guy, and it's all about the small company that actually understands relationship-based business. So good morning to everybody who's tuning in. Um, good morning, Brenda. Hi, Mary. Hi, Kimberly. Christine, good morning, everybody, on Facebook. Um, and it seems that I'm my stream is... Uh, going great today. Um, it's not choppy. So good morning, everybody tuning in. It's the day before Cinco de Mayo. Um, I'm just talking about a winery experience that we had the other day. Not such a good winery experience. Not because they charged us, but because it just weren't. There was no hospitality. There was no just no no. I remember I remember working. I remember working as a. I remember working as a um, busboy as a waiter years ago. I must have been like 19 years old. 18, 19, 18 years old. No, gee, well, wow, before that. 17. I was 17. And I was working at a place called Gold Mountain. If you're from Ellenville, Gold Mountain was a resort, um, like a chalet resort. Uh, he had about, I don't know, 15, 20 units, and everything was individual chalets. Really nice, uh, you know, being from back in the 80s and early 90s. 
And I remember this, these guests drove in, these guests drove in from, um, from Connecticut and we were busy. It was a busy brunch. Something was going on. It was a busy brunch. We were understaffed and I'm running around, running around, running around. These guests sit down. Uh, they drove in just for brunch. They sit down and we, the staff, we couldn't get to them quick enough. And I knew that. And we were just running around like, oh my gosh, who's getting that table there? Who's getting that table over? Who's getting that table over there? And I remember like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, this couple gets up and walks out the door as in their, as of their leaving. I'm like, oh my gosh, that table's leaving. I'm only 17 years old at the time. I dropped everything I was doing. I ran out after them and said, I'm so sorry. We haven't gotten to you yet. This and that, you know, we're a little busy. I'm so sorry. You know, I, I, I'd love for you to come back in. And they were like, they were, they were actively upset. Like nobody's been to us. What's going on here? And I fixed the situation as a 17 year old. They came back into the restaurant, sat down, had an amazing meal, went to the owner. He's awesome. Like he is awesome. Um, he totally saved the day for us. Like they, they went to Harris. Harris was the owner and totally like, totally like hyped me up and they would keep coming back like every few months, um, to have, to have dinner to have brunch. They'd take their, you know, their Sunday drive and come have brunch. And at 17 years old, I was able to save a situation seeing that the situation was bad or seeing, or seeing that it needed more attention. So my thing is, you know, that's what we teach our staff is, you know, you, you just make the situation. Okay. Somebody complained about our brisket the other night. I looked at the staff, you're not charging them, right? Like, oh, no, I would never charge them. They, they, you know, they said something to me. We fixed it. You know, and that's the kind of staff that team members that we want at the restaurant, people that are empowered to take care of situations and bring it to the next level. Um, I just felt this winery just had no culture of, of being able to understand, like, anybody who was really there, especially us who was there. At, the person pouring the wine knew, hey, we're bringing 14 people back. We're restaurant owners. We've poured the wine before no special word of any mention, nothing. And the two or three people that actually ended up contacting us, taking care of us, checking us out, nothing, nothing, nothing. So never go back there, but that's, you know, lesson learned. That's why Jamie and I go do all these, all these great trips ahead of time. We desperately want to get to Sicily. Sicily is like a lot of you are asking us for, to go to take you to Sicily. We know a lot of great wineries in Sicily. Jamie and I have personally never been to Sicily. So our next trip, our next trip to Italy to Apulia, um, hopefully, Puglia, Italy, soon. Um, we are, Jamie and I will take the, f the full week before that and scout out Sicily, drive all the routes. And we we, we already know the restaurant, we already know the winery owners because we meet them at wine tastings. They come to the city. Um, Jay, you want to text Courtney and tell her that they'll be to pick up the lawnmower in 15 minutes? Yeah. So we want to make sure that the wineries are truly accommodatable. We want to make sure that the route actually works. And some of the tours that are happening, a lot of tours that are happening, I was part of a mastermind group for, for the travel for the travel world. A lot of these people booking trips, a lot of these these tour guides, these tour agencies, a lot of them have never even been to the places where they're taking people. What they do is they they do is they call a supplier. They're called suppliers. And these suppliers have these cookie cutter trips already lined up. And these cookie cutter trips might include a winery like we just experienced the other day. Quite possibly a winery we just experienced the other day. So these, so these, so these tour planners have these cookie cutter, cutter trips. They work with these, these people and they just know who can pump people in and out, who can pump people in and out, who can pump people in and out. Our first couple of our first, well, our first trip to Italy, um, we experienced something like that because I handed our list to the, our travel partner of all the wineries that we wanted to go to. Here's the 12 wineries that I know that I've been to. And then this person hands it off to a supplier and the supplier has their cookie cutter mentality and say, well, they just scratched off half my list and handed us all these other new wineries. So out of the 12 wineries I handed our travel partner here, only six came back and there were six new ones on the list. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, it's a good thing. I can know some of these, know, or know who they are, or I can at least start a relationship with them before we go. But there was one winery um, that we went to in Italy for our first time that I even, I had the relationship established as I, I knew the I knew the importer very, very well, but he, it, it, the winery was a totally different situation. I knew the importer very well, and he was well. He bent over backwards for us. He came to see us, and I bought products from him before. And he told, but we get to the winery, and it's like, well, gee, who's in charge here at the winery? And ended up coming out, the sales manager, and taking great care of us, this and that. But it was like, oh my gosh, like all of a sudden, like we're now like 
working with these suppliers that don't understand what I'm trying to do as as a tour operator. Somebody taking you to wineries. They have no idea who, who what I really want to do. So that's the main reason why Jamie and I totally took that program over ourselves is why we, we, we plan everything. I never want to be, um, and we've had great trips to Italy and great trips to Spain, but I never want to be in a situation where we're relying upon things that I don't have control of. And if I took you to this winery in Long Island, and I know their wines, <laughs> know their wines, I would like their wines, and if I would have taken you there without going there myself first and had that kind of experience, it would have been like, gee, where's Marcus taking us? So that's why we that's why we do things like that. Um, Cinco de Mayo, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Jamie writes thank you cards, like handwritten thank you cards, every single to the hotel, to everything. The hotel we checked into was amazing. Amazing. Um, the uh, Preston House in Riverhead. The <laughs> As soon as we checked in, we got to our room and we went unannounced. I guess I guess sometimes we should announce ourselves ahead of time, say, hey, we're tour operators, mm-hmm. we're coming in. But we don't. We just show up to these hotels and we pick the hotels, we go online, we pick them. And we walked into the hotel room. We we're like, oh my gosh, this is an awesome hotel. We looked awesome from the ratings and from the price and from all the pictures online. It looked like a really awesome hotel. And we got in and we're like, okay, wow, this hotel's impressive. We got checked in, went down to the manager and said, listen, Here's my business card. We own a restaurant. We do we do wine tours in Italy and Spain and in Finger Lakes. And now we're thinking about coming down to, um, to Long Island. We would love to have you. Are you free right now? You want to take take a tour of rooms? Oh, of course we do. Of course we took us around to rooms, showed us all the rooms, showed us the suites, showed us everything, and like he was on top of us for the rest of the week totally on top of us for the rest of the week. Make sure we're having a good time. Make sure we had everything. Um, just wanted to see if we wanted any upgrades, things like that. Totally on top of us. He also told the kid that with the restaurant there, the restaurant was amazing. The food was just like amazing. We walked in there. It's like they knew us already. The the, the manager, I don't even know what her name was. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer. She like bent over backwards for us, like whatever we want. Like it's like she already knew us because he already told her, Alberto already told her. And, and, that's like the kind of hospitality that we're that we're looking for. It's like if you're going to take care of us, men or backwards, and want the business, you know, we're comfortable doing doing the business with you. But the rooms, the hotel was just totally amazing. So when Jamie and I are in, in the Finger Lakes, and this is the first time, our first time long on, we use a service called Main Street Drivers. Main Street Drivers is an amazing company. So Jane, uh, James, who I become friendly with because we've used the service so much, we recommend a lot of people. So if you're going to the Finger Lakes and you want to do a wine tour, and you, like, let's say it's two, two or four of you, you can use James' service. He sends a driver to, to you at your hotel or, or wherever, your Airbnb, your house. He sends a driver to you, and they drive your car. Fully insured, everything. Ready to go. Um, your car, their driver. It's an amazing service. Hudson Valley doesn't have anything like this. Hudson Valley has nothing like this, nothing that I know like this. And James is not in this area. James does Finger Lakes, Long Island, Oregon, and Washington, like Walla Walla, Yakima. He does all these wine regions except for the Hudson Valley. He goes, Marcus, there's a calling for in the Hudson Valley. He goes, I, he goes, I don't know the Hudson Valley, which is why I don't go into the Hudson Valley. He goes, I know Long Island very well. I know the other wine regions. I know Finger Lakes because I live here. He goes, but I don't want to go into a region where I don't know what's going on. He goes, I'm uncomfortable. I said, I totally agree with you. This is what I do with our winery trips. I, I make sure that I know the region before I take people there. So I said, would you mind if I started that type of business? I have an Airbnb and I got great connections. He goes, Marcus, I'll, I will help you start the business. We can work together. You send me people, I'll send you people. Just don't come into my territory and I won't go into your territory. I said, James, that's an amazing deal, of course. You know, so James has been working, we've been working with James. So we are starting a service like that. Um, we're getting insurance next week for this, um, getting, all, getting, getting the, the corporation set up for this. It's going to be a spinoff of our VIP winery vacations, and it's going to be your car, our driver, Hudson Valley Hudson Valley VIP wine tours, and we're going to start that business, and we're taking bookings for it. We're hiring people that are have clean licenses, preferably um, bus drivers, school bus drivers, um, screening them, screening them um, police officers, off-duty police officers, retired police officers. These are the kind of people that we're looking. So if you know anybody that fits that realm that wants to work, you know, a little bit on the weekends part-time uh send them our way drivers 
So we are um, really going to launch that business, and um, I'm really excited about um, really excited about the possibilities that. And it's just it's amazing because we know we have a lot of great wineries that we have connections with here in the in the Hudson Valley. So I'm really excited to have people start doing that. We've had a couple people asking us already because we've told a couple people they're like this is an amazing idea. So um, VIP VIP Hudson Valley tours your car our driver. Um, we're starting to take reservations for those now, and we'll help you plan the wineries. We go, the driver goes to your place, picks you up, drives your car, and brings you back to your car. That's how that works. And um, it's $42 an hour, four hour minimum is how that works. $42 an hour, four hour minimum. We're going to be sending out more information on a Wednesday email, I think tomorrow. We're updating the website today. I have my assistant working on the website today. I wrote all the copy for it yesterday. Uh, and we're working on a little new logo, the VIP logo, which if you can see in the back right there, um, if you're on um, Instagram, and if you're on Facebook right there, the VIP logo is a bottle of wine. It says VIP Winery Vacations, and it has a plane going around the bottle. We're going to actually do a little car going around the bottle. Uh, so that's what we're working on today. So um, busy day here in the office. So thank you everybody for tuning in. If you're just tuning in now and you're catching us, do hashtag live. If you're tuning in, if you caught it on the replay, hashtag replay. And anything else I missed, Jamie? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, yeah. So Mother's Day, we are going to um, be open normal time, which is 3 o'clock. Mother's Day, uh, 3 o'clock. Um, we're not doing brunch. Had a couple calls for brunch. You know, we're just not geared up for brunch anymore right now. We were doing brunch for years every Sunday. When COVID hit, we had to obviously reanalyze everything. We couldn't be open for indoor dining. Um, we couldn't do these things. We're at a point right now, I was having another conversation with another restaurant owner just recently, very recently, and they're talking about expanding, expanding, expanding. And they're a newer operation. I said, you know what? I did that for years. I always thought I needed to be open more meals, more meals, more meals, more days. And I was at a point where we were going seven days a week here uh, for, for several years, seven days a week, doing lunches and dinners on the weekends, double shifts. And I'm actually making more money now doing just five dinners, being closed two days a week and not doing brunch on the weekends or brunch on Sundays. I'm actually making more money. And this person was like, you're right, my overtime is killing me right now. I mean, all of my profits are getting put back into labor, back into overtime. I said, you know what? It's a beautiful thing to be able to run a restaurant and not have to worry about paying all this exuberant overtime. And when we were in the growth mode, growth, 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 and we were pushing to the next level and pushing to the next level, it was always about the high-end sales. Like, what can we do? Like, how do we how do we increase our sales by another 10% this week, 20%? And, you know, how do we do more? How do we do more? How do we do more? Do we open more? And this and that. And you forget about the backside of it. Like, well, what is opening more really costing me? What is all this labor really costing? And we, we run numbers and we're very analytic like that. But sometimes you get caught up in the top end number. The top end number is really nothing in business. Um, last year was our best, one of our best top end numbers. It was one of our best bottom end numbers. So we're very fortunate last year. We worked hard, um, worked very hard last year. We did a lot of pivoting, a lot of changing, and we had a great year. And a lot of that is thanks to everybody who's who, who's here on Facebook and Instagram with us and everybody who supports us. So thank you everybody very much for all that support. And, um, we are very excited about 2021. We've made some changes in the garden, some more tables. Uh, we've added some more things. So we're super excited about everything that's happening here at the restaurant and um, and the great year that we had. So that is it. Uh, Mother's Day is a three o'clock three o'clock open uh, regular menu. There'll be there'll be a couple specials in there, right? We might do a scallop special or something. I'm not sure, but uh, that is um, that's a deal with that. Cinco de Mayo tomorrow here in Ellenville. Uh, we will be open at 5 o'clock, limited menu, and lots of margaritas. And that's about it. It's almost 9 o'clock. I'm going to go out for my run here in a few minutes. And um, Jamie and I, uh, thank you everybody for your business. Thank you for your support. We couldn't be doing this without you. And um, that's it. Everybody have an amazing day. Did I miss anything, Jamie? No. Nope, got everything. All right. Everybody have an amazing day.